Hey, it's Jang here from UltimateRC.com with a look at the Thunder Tiger TS2E. This looks like a one-tenth scale four-wheel drive regular on-road sedan, but it is not. This is more like two-thirds of a four-wheel drive sedan, because check it out, it's actually two-wheel drive. They started out with a four-wheel drive sedan platform, and they just removed the front diff and front shocks and front belt. Instead, you get pan-car-style suspension up front with just a spring that goes over the kingpin. Unfortunately, this was not executed very well, as the spring doesn't go on completely flat, and some excessive length and friction of the kingpin gives you effectively two spring rates. At the rear, things are much more conventional, and this is effectively the rear end of the TS4E four-wheel drive. You get plastic-bodied oil-filled shocks, and the lower suspension arms have adjustable droop screws. Camber, unfortunately, is not adjustable on this model, as they give you solid plastic camber links. In the middle, there is a ball diff, and it rides on oil light bushings, as do the wheels. For power, they give you a 540 size generic sealed silver can brushed motor. The brushed only ESC is only rated down to 17 turn motors, and the manual says it will overheat if you use reverse for more than 8 seconds or if you use brakes too frequently. The wheels and tires are standard touring car size with 12mm hexes, and the rubber compound on the tires is decent for RTRs, but as you can see, there are no foam inserts in there. The radio is 2.4 GHz and it has reversing and trims as well as endpoints for throttle, that's for nitro vehicles, and it has steering dual rate. For extra parts you get a few very basic tools as well as a couple extra sets of pistons for the rear shocks and some preload clips. With a 2 cell LiPo, the TS2E tops out at 18.18 miles per hour. The motor is very badly undergeared out of the box with the 22 tooth pinion, and it hardly develops any heat even after running a full charge through a battery. Nevertheless, as you see here, it is still quite easy to overpower the rear tires. Two wheel drive RCs generally have a very significant rearward weight bias to put as much weight on the driven tires as possible, but this one's about 61 to 39 percent rear to front, compared to 55 to 45 percent rear to front on the four wheel drive car. Thankfully, with the very limited power, it's not too difficult to just go easy with your trigger finger and roll onto the throttle from low speeds. Interestingly enough, even with its limited weight bias, the car still has a lot of front tire scrub and understeer at speed. On a track, the TS2E is very smooth and not very difficult to drive. It's just exceptionally slow. You do want to really plan your turns in advance and use the understeer front tire scrub to slow the car into turns. Two-wheel drive means two-wheel braking. If you use the brakes and you're not going in a perfectly straight line, the rear tires will almost always lock up and spin you out. The car is not frustrating to drive, it's just different from the norm. And it's no surprise that it takes a little bit more skill than driving a four-wheel drive. Now here I geared up to a 28 tooth pinion, 6 teeth above stock, and with the stock spur that's just about as far as you want to go if not a little bit further than you want to go because the motor is now actually sticking out from the bottom of the chassis just a little bit. With a smaller spur gear you can definitely gear higher than this as I only ended up getting up to the 100 degree Fahrenheit range, with ambient air temps in the lower 60s. Here I've also swapped in and warmed up some racing slick tires. With this gearing it's now topping out at a whopping 23 miles per hour, giving me little to no noticeable difference in low end acceleration, but a little bit more speed on the back straight. In this case the new tires are giving me more additional traction than is needed to handle the extra speed. With better tires I was also able to more easily see the front tire scrub. With no front shock absorbers and high static friction in the kingpins, the front tires actually chatter across the ground. Gripping, letting go, gripping, letting go, gripping, letting go. Summing things up, it's an okay car, a little something different with two wheel drive. Slow, but not necessarily underpowered given the small size of the rear tires. And it could make a decent entry level car if sold at a very low price. The problem for me with the TS2E is that it costs $150. For $100, I could get an off-brand four-wheel drive, perfectly reliable car, with a 2.4 GHz radio and four oil shocks. For about $180, I could get a brushless four-wheel drive. Or for around the $150 price of this car, I could get a two-wheel drive off-road vehicle that can be driven on the street or on dirt and over jumps and stuff. 
Simply put, to me, the TS2E is an interesting vehicle and performs okay, but it really doesn't give you enough bang for your buck. That's it from me for now. Talk to you again soon.